interesting stuff. So we'll see how we do for the rest of the rest of the matches. I like keeping this hand. It'd be kind of fun to play with this card and see if it's any good. Points on green also. I like, uh, it's kind of close. I like Deep Root Warrior because we enable Raid for Stormfleet Spy better than the Diviner. I mean, the Diviner, it's not like it can't attack. and It might attack as a 1-4, but it enables Raid a little more profitably. Unless we're trading with the 3-1 Raptor, which is a little bit annoying. Okay. This could be pretty interesting, because the Archer is another option available to us now. As a way to fight and make them pay life. So it's kind of nice that we have them on the back foot. So we can Stormfleet Spy to draw a card, or we can do the Archer, which makes them pay life, and also blocks the 3-1. Well, so I like, I like that over the Spy, and we'll still probably be able to get Raid next turn. Yeah, so they will pay the life. Still, still do it. <laughs> Got to pray for the moto bug, right? Mm, so the land would be sweet here for Tempest Caller. But I think we enable Raid and we draw that card. Opponent extremely likely to block with the the th their three two. We trade slightly up on mana. They get some life. And does a little bit of their life payment, and then we get to get a dorky two two down, but at least draw a card. All right, so a little bit extra. Spice. Shapers is fine, though we'd kind of like to keep hitting our lands. And there we, we have done it. No real reason to even attack into open mana. Because Slash of Talons exists. So I think I want to just get this guy out here. Which will threaten to make our lands into beaters. After we see what our opponent plays. Opponent's on Abzan. Ooh, that, that'll do it. That's a card that makes you want to be Abzan, all right. An answer for that would be nice. Okay, seven life tap, kill something. I think Tempest Calling here is fine. We attack with everything we outpace the opponent's damage a little bit. But 
but I think I want to... Oh, that can't attack, of course. So. Uh, attacking into that card is, is difficult. We just got to wait and see how they're going to use its ability. This way, even if they blast our 3-3, three, three, we can double block. So this will prove to be a hard card to beat. It'll be kind of frustrating to lose to a misplay and then lose to one of the few broken rares in the set. That might be where we're at. Pay seven life is no small cost, though. And that's pretty funny of a hit. Because if we get a bunch of mana, that looks really good for us. So to because just taking the Vigilance lifelink will be insane. So even though this card is just phenomenal. I want to hit lands. And our opponent will see why we... Why we did that in just a moment. <laughs> because the 4-4 lifelinking body is... Uh, It's good enough that taking it will mean disaster for our opponent. So I kind of want to hit a couple of land drops. Puts us on. Hit one land drop. Get down our Colossal Dreadmaw. Hit another land. Take their Vona. So this card is enough of an issue that I'm going to block with everything and see what the what the blowout is. Slash of Talons gets rid of two. The big thing gets rid of the three. And they could always... Yeah, destroy something in combat because it's vigilant. So they could destroy the three in combat, have a slash of talons, but that we still get there. So they didn't even opt to destroy something in combat, so they must really be worried about their life total now, losing Vona. And here comes their Dread Maul. Here comes our Dreadmaw. And we both have decent boards and one card in hand. So now we play off the tippity top. So now one more land drop means we take Dreadmaw. So that is what we hope to see now. In the, in the meantime, I think I'll still offer the trade of Dreadmaws if they make that available to us. So it seems we're both biding our time. This will let us attack, which makes it a pretty nice draw. <sighs> I don't think there's much of a point to attack with things beyond the Dreadmaw. They could have that big uh, kill spell. They have 
have the snapping sail back to double block the treadmill. It's not the worst thing to have here. It's still not killing. You got to put something else in front of it, something that will die, unless they have a trick. Okay, there we go. The Adanto Vanguard joins the fray. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's very important to me that the damage hit the snapping Drake first, or the snapping, which we call it. Sailback. I always loved Dimetrodons, the Sailback dinosaurs, so I think that's quite cool. Yeah, but it's indestructible. You got it, Chief. And you even get your Enrage trigger for your trouble. So yeah, our opponent's got to feel pretty good about that, even though they still can't um, attack yet with the 6-6. Six -six. But hopefully we draw the land and take the Colossal Dreadmaw, and that just spells disaster for them. So we're not getting it this turn. But we're getting it next turn. So what happens if we attack with everything? We take a lot on the backswing. Let's play this out. We could attack with the... Um, I guess we should have held it in case there's a discard spell from our opponent. That's one of the ways we lose this for sure. Block, block, block. We get in for two. I think we just want to still provide some some pressure. That might be wrong. This way they have to take a little bit of damage. So they did they had the slash of talons all along. So that attack will trade for two of our guys. Maybe three if they go to pump this guy. It looks like they're looking to cast something. So the second slash. And, and we'll still trade. So now they're playing off the top. Kind of hope they hit just some middle of the road creature here. We have to take six. And then that's something we didn't want to see, but... Getting their Colossal Dreadmaw is pretty good for us. Uh, we could have attacked with both and stayed hyper-aggressive. But it's not like we're getting in for a ton of damage if we do that. Okay. The risk of flooding out is pretty real now. If they answer our 6-6, six, six, they could have the f destroy attacking creature draw a card spell here. And it seems they do not. So, let's see if they draw their outs. And if they do, let's hope that we can get drawing some more valuable stuff and get back into it as well. Run the ground is just a savaging here. In case they have another sail back or something. Chumping to stay alive. Another turn to draw the answer. And then if they produce blockers, we run a ground and get in with the. the one X's. And 
damage. We might have closed this out just in time. Let's attack with everyone just so we have three lethal threats coming in. See what our opponent has to answer this. So the two slasher talons is worth paying attention to. We'll look at our X2s and see if they're really worth the include. So that's an example of entrancing melody showing just the kind of work it can do in a game. And it would have done match one if I knew that my pirate didn't have menace. Uh, reading is reading is important. So this to me looks like a matchup where we just run it back and, and try it again. Uh, I'm not excited about the jungle dover, but we didn't see too much targeted removal. I mean, Shaper's Sanctuary makes it so they pay 7 with uh, Vona and we still draw a card for our trouble, but I think in that slot I'd rather just have the dive down. And I think I'm going to bring that in because that card's hard enough to beat and it would be nice to have, have that option available to us. And Jungle Dover is hardly a card, I think. Yeah, why don't we try it like that? Still have not drawn Drover of the Mighty. Drover of the Mighty's excellent, excellent card. Hmm. I don't think we can keep this. It's close, but I don't think we can keep it. This is fine. It's not it's not great. It's fine. Got it slightly better there. Now we, we see our Drover. I think I might even wait till turn 3 to play out the Drover just and play scared of um, removal. Although they didn't seem to have any proactive removal and there's not much of it in the game. Alright, but now we still have that option and I'm going to take it. If this comes up to a 1-4, we're in business, so come on, not a land. Not a land, yes, and we'll gladly keep that 3 on top. And now we pretty conveniently have just the right size creature to block the Vanguard. So I didn't look deep enough at my sideboard, actually. I should have been looking again at the 1-1s, one or the X-1s and X-2s, to play around Slash of Talons, and also to have something you know that survives the Vanguard's attacks. They're going with New Horizons. That's pretty good. Gets the Vanguard right out of our range. It's going to make it very enticing to um, bounce that Vanguard soon. I have to take the form. I'm not crazy about playing the water trap <laughs> weaver here. I think we just plan on taking the four again. Yeah, you're not planning on blocking, so you might as well get in for one. And um, we'll dive down against removal, take the four, and then we have run aground to reduce the vanguard back down to something that we can answer. with our 1-4. Be nice if they played removal here. That's a card, alright. Opponent's on a pretty aggressive build. It's kind of interesting. Because it's a crew one cost, so our opponent still gets to get in for four. 
when we put the Vanguard back on top of their deck. So it may be worth... keeping... Uh, keeping it tapped down for a turn and having more information. So we have dive down and pounce still available to us. The vehicles do complicate things. If we can get out of this initial stage of the game, we're doing pretty well. Drawing our big dinos soon would be sweet. So they don't have anything to crew with there. We could pounce, but they make it indestructible and get the best of that exchange. We can play this Waker of the Wilds. Which is at least a... Th and yeah, we keep up dive down when we play this. So Waker of the Wild is at least a 3-3, which blocks the sleek... I actually have no idea if it's Schooner or Schooner. I think it's probably Schooner. It'll be interesting to see what their instant speed play is. Ooh, that's an annoying one. Something we can't answer super easily as well. Opponent's deck seems fun. It's going to take a lot of work to get out from under what they're up to here. So we have a couple of options available to us here to think about. We could take four from the sale back. Let's do this because they're likely to let us Oh, no, 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 I'm trying to clear my blockers. Okay. So let's uh, do this. This. Because, yeah, they're likely to let us keep our 1 4, which might eventually be good against the Vanguard once we answer everything else that's going on. Giving it indestructible is fine. So we could lose big time on this interaction. But I don't think I want to just lose this guy here. So I think I want to try to dive down the waker so it survives here. So if it gets Slash of Talent, we're still out of it. But I'm not sure what else at instant speed gets rid of it. Yeah, so it still dies now. So we just trade the dive down for the slash. So not a draw we're super excited to see.
all of all of everything that we have we can do at instant speed but I'm not sure there's anything super great that we can do We can run a crown the vanguard now, so they have to draw it for next turn. Let's see what they draw and do it at instant speed. Kind of annoying that we have to tap the drover to get this to work too. So it'll be interesting to see if they have an answer to this. But I think we do it. So to try and well, we can't really strand the the sleek schooner just yet. Because we know they have the vanguard on top. This ends up being a reasonable draw. New Horizons makes that Vona very easy to, for them to play. So we may have slightly stabilized here, but we're basically living in fear of that card. We haven't seen much pump from them, but we know they have a second slash of Talons. So if they have a pumping combat trick, we we got owned. But if they were planning the slash of talons, then we only lose one thing, depending on how they block. Because they could, yeah, they could sequence it to still lose two things and keep the headwater sentries with the slash of talons. But now it looks like they're lining it up to slash of talons and have the four three kill the headwater sentries. So we really need we kind of need to draw something sweet. Worst case scenario is they have some big pump like the plus 3. Although they're still not sequencing it right to get the most out of that. They'd have to have a plus 5 pump to kill both of these guys. So it's probably the slash of talons. Yep. And they just want to get rid of the 2 5, which is fine. A 1 4 still answers the vanguard. And hopefully, if they don't play another threat here, we're just going to wait it out. So now we live in fear of their big bomb that instantly closes the game out. But we'll see what we can do. We have quite a lot of work to work to do if we want to stabilize. This could be their dread mod, which is also bad. Yep. I'm not sure that we have much in the way of answers for this. And of course we draw land. We can block in such a way as to buy us another turn, I guess. I'm not sure it's a turn worth taking because what's our what are what do we possibly draw to get us out of this? Yeah. 
So let's see what we can do in this matchup. And the next two that we can maybe do without is the Keeper. And we could put in a Sanctuary because we know they're going to be targeting our guys with those. There's also an instant speed answer to it. It's expensive, but it's instant speed. Yeah, why don't we just try it with that? Because we also if we get an aggressive start. This is a fine hand with the potential to be just nutty. And hopefully Opt will get us there. I, I need to be aware of my how long it's taking me to play as well. So we want to opt into some good early plays. We'll actually draw that. <laughs> Bad beats. Air Elemental should hopefully be hard for our opponent to beat. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to keep the Slash of Talons. Yeah, it seems right to not, because we, we kind of have been playing around it. Yeah, we're, we have a lot of land, so why don't we keep that on top as well? And we'll just play it out. Blocks the one four at the very least. We've only seen the two slash of talent, so now we also don't have to live in fear of double slash of talents on our air elemental. They look like they're looking for um, white sources also, another reason they bottom that. Shapers of Nature with Deep Root Warrior means we can attack through next turn or just play out our elemental, both of which are reasonable lines. I think it's the elemental for sure. Put the pressure on him. We hit another land, we're elemental into Dreadmaw, and then we're really pulling ahead. They block, we might pump. Seems kind of unnecessary though. I think we just play out the elemental. Yeah, so they're seeing that we can pump it to be a 4 4, and they're, they're wondering if they care enough about that creature. Yeah, I think I would take that up too, because it eats up so much of my mana for the turn. And mana I'm not willing to to spend. Because getting the air elemental down represents an actual threat. And if they're pinched on white and their hand is mostly white stuff, we can really pressure them now with this air elemental. Land for turn means Dread Maw. And Entrancing Melody is going to be pretty bomb level when it comes down this game. So no land for turn. Here we might take the incentive to put a counter. Uh, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll definitely put a counter to trade with the sail back on whatever they they block. Yeah, so that sail back, it's possible that's a, just a really big beating. They finally got their white mana. But having the shapers up to, to not just get owned by it is pretty good. Especially because it didn't happen that I was actually intending to play around it. It just kind of ended up that way. Pterodon Knight does not have flying yet. Not terribly exciting here. Run aground could end up being very strong. I 
I don't think we need to attack with the 3-3. Three, three. They're not going to make the trade. Let's draw a card and get down Drover of the Mighty. Another Shapers is pretty strong, too. So we have a lot of options available to us. I imagine so does our opponent. But we have the clock on them with the flyer. I'm going to play something huge now. Ooh, Thundering Spine back. Let's get in for three with the Pterodon if they, if they feel like it. But um, a pretty easy run of ground because it buys us enough time with the... Uh, that card. We don't quite have lethal this turn, but it's really likely they eat our Stormfleet Spy. So it's probably not even worth attacking with everything. So this lets us threaten lethal just in the air. So if they tap out again for the spine back, put a counter on the air elemental, and we swing for lethal, and they see it, and they they have had enough. All right, so we picked up one game. Fewer misplays on my my part, I would say. Let's take it to the last game and see if we can two one this match.